So the first section of this tutorial will explain how the navigation system works. On the S keyboard range, this is located on the upper right section here and consists of a browse button, an instance button which requires some further explanation, a back button which is pretty self-explanatory and takes you back to the previous state in your browsing. We have up and down left right cursors, an additional preset up and down cursors, and an enter button. Finally, we have a central jog wheel, which we can mostly use to navigate the browser, especially as it's a push down button, which selects our chosen instruments and presets, as you'll see. Now, if we press browse straight away, you'll see that nothing happens on our screen. And that's because we have to drag an instance of complete control into a new MIDI track in our DAW. Whilst I'm doing this, now is a good time to briefly explain what that instance button is for. Instance is only active when using a DAW which does not support advanced integration. This currently includes Pro Tools, Digital Performer and some other popular DAWs. And what this means is that when using more than one instance of complete control within a session, DAWs without this advanced integration require you to press the instance button to bring up a software window. This is then used to switch across the multiple instances. With DAWs such as Ableton Live and Logic, however, this is not needed and navigating across multiple instances is simply done using the four black cursor buttons. Now let's close our plugin window here as we're going to navigate using the keyboard, which is slightly different from using the software. So now, if I press browse, up comes a browser which looks very different from the regular plugin version we just closed. If you're familiar with the browser from Native Instruments Machine 2, you'll see that on the left hand side we have similar visual boxes for each different component within the complete library. So the way to scroll through these instruments is to use our jog wheel here. You'll see a white outline when a particular drum and percussion instrument is selected, and we can keep scrolling through until we come to the next group of instruments. This is sampled instruments, and you can see what's next in gray. The next instrument group is going to be synthesizers. So we have our three groups of instruments, drums, percussion, sampled instruments, which is where most of our contact library, for example, resides, and synthesizers. Now let's go back to drums and percussion and select Polyplex, which is a reactor ensemble, but included here as a separate instrument in its own right. Now on the right hand side, we have a list of presets. And as we scroll through the various instruments, this list changes accordingly. And once we have our instrument chosen, we can then move over to the preset side by pressing the right cursor. Due to the vast array of presets available within each instrument of complete, the browser does allow us to fine tune our searches. The first option to present itself is a list of the preset banks. The options here will be dependent upon the instrument chosen. Here, we get Polyplex specific options for various kits. Others will offer vintage sets of banks from previous versions, for example. So you can easily find that old sound you might have preferred from an early version of your chosen instrument. To further refine our searches using descriptive tags, we can press our cursor once again to select various types, such as bass, drums, percussion, etc. Using the jog wheel, I can select drums. And importantly, once I confirm my selection by pressing down on the jog wheel, another set of tags becomes active to narrow down my search further. Our search selection can be narrowed down even further with a choice of modes. These become selectable once our bank type has been confirmed. Once all the search choices have been completed, the browser automatically switches over to the list of presets given. We can then scroll through and activate as before. So let's select one at random here, and we load it up by pressing down on our jog wheel.
Let's choose Analogister. Up pops our Polyplex window with the chosen preset as its current state. Now if you're familiar with using Polyplex as a reactor ensemble, you'll notice that not all the editing parameters are visible in this complete control window. Instead, we have a basic streamlined set of features. This is fine if we just want to randomize the current preset or not do any heavy editing, but if you want to have the full parameters, we simply go to the top of the screen and access one of the features that is specific to the complete control system. That feature is the plus icon, which simply expands the streamlined plugin window to the fully featured one with the editing parameters of Polyplex all visible. So now we can see our different sample layers, the pitch of each, start position, etc. So now we have an instance loaded, we can use the preset up and down buttons to scroll through our presets. You'll see the preset title in the top bar of the complete control window change accordingly. And the preset is loaded straight away. This is different from using the browser. There is no selecting and then activating using the jog wheel. This enables us to quickly program a beat, for example, and audition different presets very quickly. So I'm going to quickly demonstrate this by programming a simple 4-4 kick loop. And you'll see the presets change immediately upon using the preset up and down buttons. So let's see how simple it is to add multiple instances of complete control to our session and again use our keyboard browser to load up another sound to go along with our simple kick sequence. Let's add another MIDI track within Ableton and drag another audio unit's instance of complete control. Let's hit the browser button on the keyboard and this time I want to navigate to another reactor instrument called Razor and find a suitable bass sound. So in the browser, our first option is a range of banks. Here the list is for the latest version or vintage versions 1.5 and 1.0. Let's scroll through and choose bass in our types options. Our second choice can be digital bass. And this brings up our final choice modes, but I don't really need to limit the search any further. So I'm simply going to switch over to the preset choices by pressing the right cursor now. I'm going to randomly select a sound and up pops our razor window. And again, it's a streamlined version without the full set of editing features. So I'm going to expand the full window by pressing the plus button. I'm going to quickly add in a couple of bass notes. This is just to show how easy it is to work with multiple instances of complete control and how we can navigate our browser all from the keyboard. Once we are happy with editing our chosen sounds, we can click the plus button again to streamline our windows, giving us more screen real estate. We can also use the magnifying glass button to disable the preset list here on the software side of things, so we can have even more space to visualize multiple instances without having to move too much stuff around the screen. And that sums up our look at the navigation section of the Control-S keyboard and Complete Control System.